Perhaps you feel you're learning code for the sake of learning code. There's so much out there, so many instructional videos here on YouTube. What do I actually need to know is probably a question you're asking yourself. Well, let me get straight to the point. The latest VBA technique that some video on YouTube says you need to know, you probably don't need to know it. The truth is you need to know about five things in Excel VBA. You've got to be able to work with ranges, work with variables, control loops, conditional statements, and then position control. Those five techniques are going to allow you to get so much done. And if you look at the videos on this channel, most of the code I do falls under one of those five categories. So bear that in mind. And I like to say to people, don't be a technique collector, be a value creator. And what does that mean? Well, let's not obsess about the code. Let's obsess about creating value in real life. And again, on the channel, everything we learn here is based on real world examples, usually based on my work. So don't worry about learning all that code. Worry about using the code, the stuff you need to create real world value. Somebody once said that intelligence is knowing what to do when you don't know what to do. Now, what does that actually mean? Well, one thing you can be sure of when you're learning Excel VBA, you're going to be in lots of situations where you don't know what to do. Excel is going to crash. It's going to crash many, many times when you're learning Excel VBA. It still crashes for me 10 years later. How you respond in that situation when you, where you don't know what to do is one of the critical determinants of your impact as a programmer. You need a debug routine. So after that initial frustration, you want to throw the computer out the window and everything. After that subsides, what do you do? Well, for me, I try to calm down, go into my debug routine. And what does this uh, consist of, broadly speaking? Well, I want to see both windows, the Excel VBA editor and Excel alongside each other. Then I'm going to step through the code using the F8 key, stepping through the code, trying to understand what's going on. I've done this thousands of times over the years. So make sure you have a debug routine and try to get good at debugging. Another point here, a kind of practical point. Have you got the equipment you need to help you with programming? Uh, two screens really helps. Having an auxiliary monitor really helps. If you only have one screen, can you align Excel and the VBA editor on a single screen? That's really going to allow you to get that debugging done. Now, don't get me wrong, I love VBA code and I want you to develop a positive addiction to VBA coding, but it can be a case of too much of a good thing. Now, let me explain. We can do so much stuff in VBA. We can even do basic calculations in VBA. So suppose we wanted to add up some values on a sheet. We could put a button in and do that using VBA. But would that actually be a good idea? There's a critical mistake here. By putting that button in, you're asking the user to click in order just to do a calculation. But we could do that with formulae. And if we used formulae, we'd retain the one quality people like about Excel, which is instant calculation. When they put numbers in, Excel calculates instantly. So this is an example of using VBA for a job that formulae would do better. So as you go through your career, you've got to work out that balance, the balance between VBA and formulae, other things in Excel. So you've got all of these things doing the jobs they're good at. We all love that sense of accomplishment when we get a job done in Excel VBA. And I tell you, it never goes away. I still get it now. But what if you were working with a data set, you get a job done, a nice data analysis, what it might be, and the customer comes back to you and says, actually, we need to add some more data to that data set, or actually we need to edit that data set every day. Have you got dynamic quality, dynamic quality in your coding? Remember, we're value creators, we're not technique collectors. So our code has to work in real life and dynamic quality is one of the key features of real life Excel applications. You're going to need some more advanced syntax, some more advanced techniques to allow your code to work with data sets that are going to increase in size and decrease in size. And there's any number of other things that might happen in a spreadsheet that mean we have to build in this dynamic quality. So learn to build that dynamic quality into your VBA. So what do we mean by a hard coded value? If you're just getting started with VBA, you're probably using hard coded values in your code. So if you have a number in there, 
even a range in there, we call that a hard-coded value. What's the problem with a hard-coded value? Well, it's not easy to change and we're trying to create code in real life and business circumstances are gonna change. We want our applications to have the flexibility to be able to cope with those changes. So our customers keep using those applications. Let me show you an example from just this week on a project. So my customer wanted cells to be colored in a particular way according to the values in the cells. It was a bit too sophisticated to do using conditional formatting. So I created a sheet and gave the client the option to choose what the formats are there. So there's flexibility there and the client has control over the application. That's as opposed to putting the whole mechanism in VBA where the client wouldn't be able to adjust those values at all. So as you go through your VBA career, think about minimizing those hard-coded values, giving as much control as you can back to the user. One thing I focus on in my Excel VBA development projects is collaboration, collaboration with the clients. So don't just go away and develop the file in a dark room and then email it to the customer a month later. Get the customer involved uh, with the development, get their ideas and input early on. Now there's one particular way this helps, which is with assumptions. And what I'm saying is make some simplifications that will make your job easier. For example, you could say to the client, are you happy not to add any columns uh, into this sheet? Discuss that with the client. I found that customers usually respond very well uh, they can be quite disciplined when they use the file. And that's important for us because it makes our job a lot easier. If we can make some simplifying assumptions, share them with the client, the programming gets a lot easier. That means more powerful Excel VBA applications. Now you've probably worked on a nightmare Excel file with 10, 20. I recently worked on a file with a hundred sheets. It is a nightmare. I hate those overcomplicated file designs. And it is a sign of an inexperienced Excel VBA developer to have an application that's overcomplicated. So how do we avoid this? Well, one thing that professional programmers do that beginners often don't is actually think about planning planning a file and I love sitting down at the beginning of a project just using PowerPoint or some kind of visual software to design an application to the client. And what are we thinking about there? We're thinking about how many sheets do we need in the file? How many do we actually need? And what should the role of each sheet be? Because broadly speaking, each sheet should have a certain role. A sheet might hold some data. A sheet might be an engine sheet for the developer to put some information in there. A sheet might be a dashboard for the client to actually interact with. So really engage with this planning process at the beginning of the project. What we want to give to the customer should be something intuitive easy to use. Now, what does intuitive mean? Well, I've got my phone here. My phone's quite intuitive to use. I'm using some software on the computer. Websites can be intuitive. Anything you like using is intuitive. So we shouldn't really be giving the user, you know, user instructions for an Excel VBA application. I would say if it needs instructions, it's too complicated. We want a clean and tidy interface with some buttons maybe neatly aligned at the top so that it's intuitive. The client can understand how to use it. That's only possible by avoiding overcomplicated file design. User forms, yes, it's another toy for us to use. That might have been your reaction when you first started learning about user forms. Quickly, can I put it into this file? How quickly can I start using user forms before you know you're using user forms and maybe experiencing some of the problems that come with Excel user forms. Yes, I only wanna be using user forms if there's a particular reason. Now, why is that? Let me ask you a question. What's the best way to do data input in Excel? Now, don't get me wrong, Excel user forms can do that, but the worksheet, just a simple worksheet with some nice formatting is the best way to get data, get information from the user. If we do it in the worksheet, we can also access things like cell validation, 
which is really good to support data input. So if you want to use a user form, I want to see a clear justification because a user form brings risks with it. A user form has to be supported by quite a lot of code. Often there's display issues with user forms. They tend to resize on different displays or if they're being projected in a meeting, for example. So there's problems, there's risks that come with user forms. In my projects, I'm not going to use user forms straight away, but I might use them later in the project to layer functionality on to an existing file. For example, if I don't want to add sheets to the file, I don't want to overcomplicate the design. If I don't want to add sheets or extra columns to the file to layer uh, additional functionality on top. And I found that clients uh, really like that. But just something to bear in mind, user forms bring some problems. So make sure you have a specific justification for using one. It seems that a lot of people out there go through the same VBA journey and it goes something like this, discovering VBA for the first time, appreciating a few of the possibilities, trying out some of the techniques, but at some point getting lost. Maybe they don't have some of the skills we're talking about in this video. At some point getting lost and then feeling discouraged and eventually giving up on VBA. And something else often happens at this point, they read maybe some of the criticism of VBA and suddenly it's kind of validated some of their doubts in their mind and they're suddenly talking about the limitation of VBA and then they go on and use a different language to do something. Now the truth is any language, any computer programming language has its pros and cons. Excel VBA for example, well it's working out of Excel so it's not going to work with very big data sets over 500,000 words and Excel also isn't great for collaborative working if you've got people working in different locations but for almost everything else excel is going to do the job particularly with excel vba and it really kind of discourages me when people say oh vba is too old it's out of fashion it's not powerful enough when people haven't taken the time to really really understand excel vba and understand its power i've got a whole load of customers that i, I work with excel vba has changed transform the way they're working, freed up hours and days of time, had a massive impact on their company and their lives. So don't give up on XL VBA too early. Good luck.